It's here, it's here, it's finally here. The NBA playoffs have officially started. No more regular season games, no more bubble placement games. The real deal is finally here. Now on today's podcast, I will be talking about the four playoff games that are happening tonight. And those are the Jazz versus Nuggets, Nets versus Raptors, Sixers versus Celtics, and Mavs versus Clippers. Not only will I be talking about the games, but I will be giving my prediction on who will be winning these series, as well as a couple of key players to watch out in each game who could be deciding factors and why one team wins over the other. I'm your host, Just B, and this is the Post Fade Podcast. What's up, y'all? Hope everything is going well on y'all in. Look at us, man. We are in the middle, well, the start of the NBA playoffs. Now, it's a little bit later than what we're used to, but who's really complaining? We have basketball. We have meaningful basketball. So I want to dive into the four playoff games that are happening tonight with you all. Uh, the first game I want to talk about was the Jazz versus Nuggets. Now, this matchup is its not really a matchup in my opinion. Um, the Jazz team has been killed by injuries as well as chemistry. It's, it's like every disaster that could happen to a team in a season has happened to them. Now, as we all know, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert are still not on the best of terms. Um, they never were the closest of friends. They were more of a, uh, you know, a working relationship. A lot of us have jobs and while we may not be friends with some of our co-workers, we're still able to, you know, work together with them to do whatever it is that we do. I think that relationship is uh, very similar to what Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell are going through. Um, they've been, it's not really injuries. Bodon, um, he isn't in the bubble. Uh, Ed Davis, he just recently uh, was injured, so he's not going to be playing in this series. So the depth for that team is little to none they're going to be relying heavy on donovan mitchell as a matter of fact mike conley i uh, just left the bubble yesterday to be with uh, his wife as uh, she birthed their new son so congratulations to them but the jazz are, are really going through it they have no type of depth even even when mike conley was there and bogdan wasn't there they still weren't that same jazz team like they were before and a big reason for that is because Bogdan Bogdanovich isn't there. Now, when I say that name, a lot of you people may laugh. Oh, why is he such a big deal? Yada, yada, yada. But he's very important to that team. When Bogdan was there, he was in a starting lineup. He was their second leader scoring, averaging around 20 points per game. He was a lights out shooter. He allowed them to either bring Mike Conley or Joe Ingles off the bench, which was added depth for that team. He played a huge, huge role for the Utah Jazz. So with them not having him on the team, this isn't the same Utah Jazz team that we've seen before. Combine that with the drama that is Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, I, I don't see them making it out of this first round with the Nuggets. The Nuggets are a team that are loaded with depth. Just look at Michael Porter Jr., a guy that they didn't play much during the regular season, and now you know, in his bubble placement games, he was getting heavy minutes and he was looking like a stud, as well as Bobo, who I don't really expect them to play Bobo a lot, being that um, he is a center and he did have some defensive laps, lapses here and there, but he's still a tall guy who they could throw in there for, you know, a couple minutes here and there um, if Jokic is in foul trouble or whoever their backup big, I want to say Mason Plumley, is in foul trouble. So it's it's still an option out there for them. Uh, he's an okay shooter, uh, not the best rebounder, but he's still an option nonetheless. The Nuggets are a team that operates mostly with the pick and roll between Jamal Murray and Jokic. That is pretty much their offense. Jokic, he's a guy who can, you know, you can throw the ball to him in the post, and if he has a smaller guy on him, he can get busy. As well as if you throw a double team at him, he has the playmaking skills to pass it out. And the Nuggets are a team that um, relies heavy on three-point shooting. 
you have Jamal Murray and Jokic running the high pick and roll. Uh, if anybody helps, they can kick it out to a shooter. If the defender goes under, Jamal Murray is able to pull up and shoot a three. If he goes over it, Murray can get to that mid-range spot or he can kick it out to Jokic where they can run an ISO with Jokic on a smaller player, forcing them to double team and leave an, an open shooter. That, that offense is really simple basketball, but teams have a hard time playing against it because Jokic and Jamal Murray are uh, that great of uh, two players. So with that said, I had the Nuggets winning 4-1. I'm going to throw the Jazz one game. Uh, gentlemen sweep. Maybe they, they get lucky or Donovan Mitchell goes crazy, but with that said, I don't see the Jazz putting up much of a fight in this series. Fast forwarding to the Nets versus Raptors. The defending champions are going up against a Nets team who aren't the Nets that we've seen in the regular season. Uh, different from the Jazz, actually, though. The Nets' two best players aren't playing, and that is Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Not only that, DeAndre Jordan, no matter how you feel about him, he isn't playing as well as a couple of other players. They've had to sign free agents off the street to come on this team and play, and they still made the playoffs. And a lot of that is because they are a team that plays extremely hard. They will get after you. They will die for those loose balls. Karis LeVert is looking like a stud of a player. He's gonna be that third uh, player in that trio with Kyrie and Kevin Durant, uh, who should challenge for a championship next season if we have a next season and everyone is healthy. I like Jared Allen's game. He's a nice uh, rim protector. He's been developing a little mid-range jumper, I've noticed. Uh, if he can expand his range even more, he's going to be one one hell of a player. The, the Nets will be crazy to let him go if, you know, they are thinking about doing that. I wouldn't mind the Pelicans swooping in and taking Jared Allen. But but focusing on, on this game right here. With all that said, the Nets just don't have the talent to match up with this Raptors team. This Raptors team defensively is, in my opinion, top three in the league. They have defenders at every position. Nick Nurse is one of the best coaches in the league and probably is the best coach when it comes to in-game adjustments. They have championship pedigree. A lot of people were riding this team off when they lost Kawhi and they proved that they were more than just Kawhi, this team was a team, capital T team. So Fred Van Fleet, Kyle Lowry, OG, Serge, Marcus All, all those players are just solid. They're if you want to call Siakam a star, you can. Um, I view him as more of a you know all-star caliber player. I'm not gonna call him a star, but that team is just loaded with solid players from the top of the roster to the bottom. So I see the Raptors sweeping the Nets, actually, 4-0. Um, now, there's a good chance that the Nets uh, could have a crazy game where Karis LeVert goes crazy or the Raptors, who rely heavy on uh, three-point shooting, just aren't hitting that night. So there's a chance that the Nets could win a game here or there, but the Raptors are getting out of this series pretty easily, in my opinion. Now, the next matchup is probably the biggest matchup, in my opinion, for tonight. And that is the 76ers versus Celtics. The 76ers are, of course, without Ben Simmons, who's going to miss uh, roughly a month, uh, depending on uh, his rehab from his injury. Joel Embiid was injured, um, I want to say, last game. So it's going to be interesting to see. No, two games ago, because he didn't play in the last bubble game that the Sixers had. If Joel is playing tonight, it's going to be interesting to see how he does. Um, Joel usually doesn't play all that great against the Celtics, but that's usually because they had Al Horford. Uh, a big reason why the Sixers went out and grabbed Al Horford was so that if the 76ers and the Celtics met in the playoffs, Horford wouldn't be guarding Joel and B. Now, with Ben Simmons' injury happening, I think that they're going to slide Al Horford into the starting lineup now. If you guys were wondering, Ben Simmons was actually slid down to a power forward during this bubble when they were starting to shake Middleton at point. So Al Horford is going to be a very important piece to this 76ers team if they have any chance of beating the Celtics in this series. The 76ers aren't a team that relies heavy on depth. 
Um, they had Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, that Wombo combo could get busy. Uh, Josh Richardson would have nights where he would go crazy. Uh, Tobias Harris has always been a very solid player. You know what you're getting from him. Um, Matisse Thibault, very nice rookie, probably the best uh, defensive guard or wing, whichever uh, you want to label him as, that I've seen in a minute as a rookie. Um, the team has has nice pieces. It doesn't have depth. When they go to their bench, that's usually when uh, teams, if they weren't already ahead, start to make their run and catch up. The Celtics, on the other hand, are a team that absolutely has depth. They have uh, a superstar in Jason Tatum. They have a star in Kimba, an all-star caliber player in Jalen Brown, a lockdown defender in Marcus Smart. That team has pieces all over the board. Gordon Hayward has been solid, actually, in this stretch. He wasn't uh, looking like, well, he's not going to be that same Gordon Hayward that he was in Utah. That's that's dead. That's gone. But earlier in the regular season, he wasn't looking like a quality rotational piece. Uh, but in these couple bubble games, he's, he's exploded. He's looked very healthy. He's looked uh, very agile, very springy. So if this Gordon Hayward, the Gordon Hayward from the placement games can... Uh, keep on and transition into the playoffs the Celtics are going to be a scary team don't sleep on the Celtics a lot of people are talking about the Bucks and uh, well the Sixers when they did have Ben Simmons but I didn't hear a lot of buzz for the Boston Celtics that's a team who can end up you know overtaking it and making it to the finals now when it comes to this series I do have the Boston Celtics winning um, in six games four to two beating the 76ers I have this as the as my prediction solely because Ben Simmons isn't healthy if Ben Simmons was healthy I could see this series going seven I could see this series absolutely going seven even with all the turmoil and how just awkward this 76ers team has has looked all season not just in these last couple bubble games or you know when Ben Simmons was hurt all season this team has been off like there's there's some sort of chemistry issues that we in the public don't know they're keeping in-house something that seemed off but anyway like I said they had Ben Simmons I could see this series going seven without Ben Simmons I see it um going six with the Celtics winning the series and moving on now to the last game of the night we have the Mavericks versus the Clippers the Mavericks, led by Doncic and Porzingis, have been looking like the best offense in the league. They put up a bundle of points. Obviously, Luka plays a big part in that. Uh, he is a ISO monster. Not only that, but he is one hell of a playmaker and one hell of a rebounder. He can do it all. And Porzingis, my God, Porzingis, just recently, as a matter of fact, before the season uh, you know, was canceled and restarted, he was finally starting to get his legs under him and look like Porzingis from the Knicks. Earlier in the season, when the season first started, Porzingis was looking like a shell of himself. But we can attribute that to him not really having any NBA action in a long time due to that injury that he suffered while on the Knicks. But if Porzingis comes out blazing like he has been and Doncic keeps being Doncic, this team can give the Clippers a scare. Now, I know the Clippers have Kawhi, they have George, they have a deep team as well, like a couple of these Western Conference teams, but there really is no stopping Doncic. There's a couple of players in the league that you can't necessarily stop. You can just try to limit or hope that they have a bad night. And I'm putting Doncic on that list. Just from the games that I've seen and just me scoreboard watching a couple games that I haven't, he seems to have a full control over the game, and he's able to get buckets whenever it's needed. He's able to hit that hard and step back, or he can drive to the goal, draw fouls. He can kick it out if people help. And the Mavericks have shooters. They have Seth Curry, Wesley Matthews. Even Dwight Powell was out there pulling. Of course, Porzingis is able to shoot the three as well. So the Mavericks are a really nice team. Um, they can definitely give the Clippers a run for their money. I can see this series uh, going seven. And as a matter of fact, I do have it going seven. But I have the Clippers 
winning it. Why? Because Kawhi is going to play a big part in that as well as depth. I mean, at, at some point, if you are the Clippers and Doc Rivers is one, one hell of a coach, future Hall of Famer, I have a belief that he is going to put in a plan to make Doncic work the entire game. And that is going to tire him out. You know, you throw multiple people at Doncic. I, I know you can't necessarily stop him, but you can try to limit him. And if you're able to limit Doncic, a lot of the pressure is going to fall on Porzingis to ball and do his thing. Now, you have guys like Tim Hardaway and Seth Curry. They can't necessarily go out there and, you know, put up 30. They're not like those type of guys. They're solid players, but they aren't stars like Porzingis and Luka Doncic are. So I absolutely have the Clippers winning this in seven. Uh, Kawhi, George, the boys, they're going to be too much for the Mavericks to handle. I don't think the Mavericks have any defenders. To and that will close out this podcast for today. If you like what you heard, please share it. Get the word out with friends and family. Let's try to grow this community. Let's try to have more people join in on this experience. As well as, don't forget to leave a review in five stars, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your other favorite platforms when it comes to podcasts. Don't forget to follow me on all your social medias. On Twitter, it's at the Post Fade. On Instagram, it's at the Post Fade Podcast. Of course, on podcasting platforms, it's going to be the Post Fade Podcast. But also, something that I will be doing very soon it's YouTube. Type in the post fade. You're going to see me. I'm going to be there. I will be doing giveaways and posting a lot of NBA content. In the meantime, I'm out. I love y'all. Good night.